Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 14th, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see the Hawaiian Islands, kind of bottom left, Pacific Northwest right smack dab in the middle of this wide-angle view of the Northeast Pacific Ocean, Alaska's to the top. We're going to be building a ridge here, and it's going to extend all the way up towards Alaska and be with us all the way into portions of next week. So we're going to dive into all those details and see what that means for us here in the Pacific Northwest as we go through the video this morning. Pacific Northwest Weather Watch is on Facebook, so click on the link down below. It makes it easy for you to share with your friends and family. Check out avalanche.org if you're going to go enjoy some of the glorious sunshine across the higher terrain and some warm conditions, actually. But you need to be careful out there because, you know, people get caught up in these avalanches every single year. Uh, yeah, so click on these individual locations depending on where you go. It gives you all kinds of good information. Avalanche danger, what kind of elevations, what to look for. And it gives you a bottom line forecast there as well. It even tell you freezing levels and all kinds of stuff there. So check it out. Now, looking at the European model, this is last night's run. I put this into motion and you can clearly see this ridge is going to be with us. It's going to get established right along the coast of Oregon, Washington and British Columbia as we go on in through this weekend. The Seahawks game will be nice and dry and should be light winds for that game on Saturday. Saturday. And again, that ridge will be with us as we go on into the early portion of next week. So some interesting stuff going on uh, in the short term with some precipitation up into British Columbia, but that'll be going as away as we go through tonight. And you can see we're going to really remain dry as we go all the way on into Friday morning. There's Saturday morning again for the Seahawks game should be completely dry across the region. And you can see no precipitation all the way through the six day period, all the way out towards Monday. And if I scroll back and forth a little bit here, you'll notice this pretty decent pressure gradient setting up right here uh, across some of the Cascades, some gusty east winds will be visiting us for some select locations. And if you can believe it, this is a bit of a thermal trough moving up the coastline. We're in January. We're talking about thermal troughs. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, if we look at the North American model, you can see the offshore flow really starts to get going as we go through the day tomorrow on Thursday. That continues on through the day Friday. Could be quite gusty at times for some select locations. Stampede Pass may get a bit gusty here. We'll take a look at that more here in a moment and I'll check out some other models. Uh, and again, you can kind of see these gusty winds as we go through the day on Friday and the North American model goes through Friday afternoon again with some gusty winds. They're probably going to continue on in through the next few days thereafter as well. And in fact, if we look at the European model, you can see on Saturday, they're still going. Sunday, we're still getting the offshore winds all the way through Monday morning here. Again, with no precipitation in sight. Now, if we take a look at 925 millibars, as I mentioned thermal trough and you can kind of see that warm air loft up the coastline there as we go on in through the day on Friday with some cold dense air behind the cascade that's going to make for those gusty winds trying to squeeze through some of those gaps and whatnot in the cascade so I mean look at this at 925 millibars it's only 2500 feet off the surface and you're talking about 25 celsius which is right about 77 Fahrenheit just off the surface. And again, very warm conditions. So yeah, interesting stuff. This is more like a summertime pattern here, just without the very warm direct rays of the sun that you normally get during the summertime. So looking at two meter temperature anomaly, we are going to have some inversions forming at times. In fact, let me back that up. Look at this as we go through the day today. Look at some of these temperatures. Uh, we're exceeding you know, 20, 25 degrees above normal across some of the Cascades in British Columbia. You can see it across portions of Canada as well. But you can also see some of the inversion action going on where we're going to be trapped in some cooler air uh, with those inversions because the weak you know, solar radiation at this time of year. And then as we go on in through Friday, Saturday, again, you can kind of see some of these inversions out there with some warm conditions across the higher tranks. I mean, look at this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, very warm across the higher terrain. It's really going to do a number on our snowpack. I'm not looking forward to this at all. There we go through Sunday. Again, very warm across the higher terrain. There's Monday. Uh, yeah, so no end in sight right now. We'll take a look to see when that might come to an end as we go later in the video here. But if we look at daily two meter max temperature, I'm going to kind of scroll through here. And as you can see on, you know, in the west of the Cascades, some some pretty warm conditions, especially for some of the foothills and some of the higher terrain. You know, if you're away from that fog, it's going to be quite nice. And some of the Oregon coast punching up in towards 60 degrees into the lower 60s on the day Friday there as well. Now, also, I mentioned the inversion. You can see as we're going through, let's go to Thursday morning here. You can see some of this fog out there and whatnot. You guys know the drill. Use your low beam, slow down. And if you're below freezing, watch out for some of that freezing fog potential as well.
So Stampede Pass, look at some of these temperatures above freezing over the next few days. But we do cool down a little bit as we go through the weekend and on into the early portion of next week. So good to see that, I guess, if nothing else. Mount Baker, that 51 degrees on Saturday. Here we're talking about mid-January, just pretty wild stuff. So let's take a look at some extended forecast stuff because some people are kind of showing that, you know, we are going to be dealing with some... Potential for some cooler air through the extended forecast. And I just want to kind of show you the latest on that here more in a moment. So people will kind of share these random deterministic model runs. And the GFS was showing yesterday some Arctic air trying to get down over the region. So this high gets all the way up here across the Bering Sea and allows for some of this north flow to kind of come down back into northwest Canada. It really is not showing a major Arctic outbreak as of, you know, this most recent run. This is hot off the press. It's the 12Z data as I scroll through, you know, the extended forecast there. So you can kind of see how these deterministic model runs kind of come and go. And sometimes they'll show some Arctic air trying to flirt with the Pacific Northwest. But for the most part, we do not have any kind of reliable signal that we are going to get you know, any kind of Arctic air mass down into the region as of right now. I'll be the first to let you know if that's anything that's going to be going on. And at the end of the run there, you can kind of see some westerly flow and some zonal flow returning back to the Pacific Northwest for some more normal winter weather here into the region. Now, if we take a look at the artificial intelligence, again, at 18,000 feet, there's a ridge that's going to be with us all the way on in through next week. Finally, that ridge starts to pinch up towards Alaska there. But what's this polar lobe going to do? Well, it's weak and it doesn't even come close. I mean, my goodness, look at that thing just well off across the Great Lakes here. Another ridge forms across the Pacific Northwest, as you can see, you know, and then maybe eventually it'll break down. Who knows? I mean, it's not even worth looking at at this point. European Ensemble mean, we scroll out there. And yes, last, yesterday afternoon kind of shows this polar lobe getting a little bit closer here. But again, this is still a far cry from any reliable signal of kind of our arctic air mass you need you know much colder air aloft you need this to take a much more favorable track off the coast of british columbia and this is well off to our north and east here so that is not a reliable indicator uh, as well and if we take a look at the artificial intelligence the ensemble mean as far as the 850 millibar temperatures you can see that arctic air largely bottled up across central canada here really no threat to the pacific northwest as of right now we'll keep watching it maybe it'll change and maybe something else will start to emerge as we go towards the end of the month and on in through the early portion of February. I mean, sometimes we get snow here in February and I'll be the first one to start rooting for it, but there's no sign of it just yet. 15 day precipitation anomaly. Look at the West Coast here, man. They just shut off the spigot. Mother Nature says no soup for you. Look at this snow precipitation at all showing up over the next 15 days in the artificial intelligence model. The 8 to 14 day shows some of this below normal stuff going on towards the end of the month. We'll see about that. I mean, who knows? We'll, I'm not going to worry about that too much, but I don't see any sign of this right now as we go towards the end of the month of January. Hopefully it switches up, but I don't know the reasoning behind that. I'm not going to pretend that I do. And if we look at the artificial intelligence, so there's that weak system kind of sliding through as we go through the day to day. And then we go off into the extended little bit of a thermal trough showing up here as we go through Thursday and Friday. We continue to have no precipitation in sight as we go through hour 200 we wait to see what comes after that some arctic air tries to get down across in some of the northwest canada and some of the central canada here but really doesn't show much help for the pacific northwest finally a weak system arrives you know 280 hours out and even after that really not much in the way of precipitation coming our way and this is a very weak system at that as well so anyway wish i had something else to report on that but again things will change it always does as you look off into the extended portion of the forecast check out the patreon page if you like um hopefully you guys are having a good day and i will catch you guys in the next forecast